Welcome to Wish I Could Play, a podcast dedicated to people who have always wanted to get into tabletop role-playing games, but have never had the chance. My name is Morshadi, here to say you can. The following game will involve descriptions of loss of air, dark corridors, descriptions of death, and weapons. As this episode was recorded in July, some of the events mentioned by David at the end of the episode have already premiered and will be linked in the description. Thank you. David, we are going to be playing a game. Despite the fact that we were uh, talking about PBTA this entire time, we are not going to play, be playing a PBTA game. We're going to be playing a game called Breathless Shoot, Loot, Survive. It is a survival horror game, role-playing game by Fairy RPGs. Have you ever played this game before? I sure have not. I mean, let's go through it real quick. Uh, it is a survival horror game. Um where you are characters who are in a, eh, say, Last of Us style survival game. You are literally just trying to survive. It has a dice mechanic system that degrades your dice. In this term, say you are wanting to run away from something and your your runaway stat is a D10. You run, it succeeds, but next time you roll it, it is now a D8. As it goes down and down and down, it degrades more and more and more. Well, things are going to get a little harder, so, but you can re restore all your dice by taking a breath. But when you take a breath, things get harder. Pretty simple. Uh, as well as being, you know, a somewhat simple game, it is also also an SRD. So, you know, people can use it, use it to create their own games. Yeah, I was super uh, interested in the mechanic of like the the dice going down i played uh, kids on bikes before which also employs different size dice for mm -hmm. uh, different skills but i hadn't i hadn't considered like well what if what if you what if you get worse like what if it goes yep. down while you're like that's that's a really cool way of handling that uh, and then putting on that pressure yeah super cool so we can just go uh, right through the through the playbook here uh the little inserts here you are a survivor the city has been walled up from the outside you're stuck with breathless crawlers roaming as far as the eye can see. You're surrounded by strangers, and the only thing to do is survive. You can't give up now. Now, we're not necessarily going to use that setting, but uh, on your character sheet, I noticed that you have you done a couple of things already. You have a character name. What is your character name? Uh, well, this was before. Let's figure out setting. The character I okay, had perfect. was uh, this this fellow named Samathan. Uh, but let's let, let's hear more about setting and then we might just completely scrap okay. this idea and, and do something else so uh i noticed that on the uh on the sheet that you sent that i sent you to list out mm -hmm. some some games that you actually own but have never played you had things uh like far flung uh which is something i've always wanted to look into as well and so i was thinking of something about in the, in, a, in a space setting maybe like uh like you're traveling, just a traveling on a spaceship kind of setting. Yeah. So we started from there. Uh, this is very going to be on the fly. And so that's the only only real idea that I had. Okay, actually, I'm s same character. I know I know how they'll fit in this world. Okay. <clears throat> and what, what, what would be your job? Uh, so so Samathan, uh, he's a contractor. Uh, he was hired, I think, to repair something on the ship. Uh, it's something that's uh, not in you know not stopping it from traveling uh and so you know he's he just like basically they hired him on for this for this run so that he could repair this thing while he's there um and i like the idea that maybe it's like the water treatment system or something i'm, I'm imagining this character as very like uh what's what's the word uh very, very like handyman idea mm -hmm. okay uh you know like he can fix plumbing uh he can do electrical work he can he can you know splice joints you can repair ship holes you know anything you need uh for for all of course the same flat price he pays by the job not by the hour so so does he travel with the spaceship then yeah i think he's traveling with the spaceship i think he's maybe even done it before they've hired him for other jobs on the ship all right uh what's the name of the spaceship david um <laughs> well if if the last of us is a area of inspiration for the game uh the first of us is the name of the ship the first of us. <laughs> okay perfect 
uh, and with it being the first of us, I think it's a colony ship. Um, I thinking like out yeah. to the first um, to the first colony out there. Uh, so it's a pretty pretty. I would say large ship. It's a larger ship than most starships, but it's not mm-hmm. not as big as like the huge colony ships. Um, but it's the first ship gets sent out there. Yay! You're going to terraform the location. Um, now you do have uh, six stats. You have bash, which you can wreck, move, and force things around. Dash, which allows you to run, jump, and climb. Sneak, hide, skulk, and lurk. Shoot, track, throw, and fire. Think, perceive, analyze, and repair and sway charm manipulate intimidate and these can be interpreted in any number of ways um and if you were like i think i can actually do it this way go and just tell me it's totally fine uh you are able to uh assign a d10 a d8 and a d6 to three of those skills and the rest are d4s which one did you assign d10 to uh, I chose a D10 and dash. I don't think that I, I specifically have a D4 and bash, a D10 and dash. Uh, I don't think Samathan is, uh, he's got like, you know, he's pretty strong, strong enough to to wield a wrench and knows his way around, uh, you know, a, a welder. But he's not like really good at, at applying those strengths in destructive ways. He's more of a builder than he is a, a terror downer. Um, but he is quite good. He's got that athlete's body. I think maybe he was, you know, star on his track team back in space high school. Uh, and he's, uh, he's got a, a D10 and dash though. Okay. Uh, I, I got a, a D4 and sneak, uh, because I don't think he's terribly stealthy. Um, I have a D8 and shoot, uh, because, uh, he's, you know, pretty proficient with a nail gun. I, I think that transfers to all, uh, firearms or similar weapons. I'm sure. Uh, D4 in think he's, he's good at solving problems, but, uh, not necessarily ones that don't involve, uh, spackle, uh, and sway. I think he's, he's pretty garrulous. I've got a D6. Okay. That's awesome. When you came on board, uh, you brought an item before you left, left, uh, spaceport. And then that's something that you carry with you at all times. Um, uh, what was that item? And it, it, you, it's with you as uh, in your backpack. Um, what a good question. That, I think... that the reason I ask is because in that, in the game you can actually use that item as whatever it is in, in for its purpose, and it becomes a D10 item. When you use that item, the then purpose of that one then goes down to do a D8, D7, or D6 and d4 and i can either break or you can't use it anymore i think he has a handbook from the company which hired him to work on this uh this colony ship that's like generational ships for dummies um <laughs> i'm gonna add that to the Because, like, I, th- I think, you know, a- information related to this particular model, although not maybe this particular ship could be found in there, uh, like, guidance on how to deal with particular situations on the ship might be in there. Um, yeah, I like, I like the idea that he has a book to look back to. Okay, perfect. So... Let's see, we got that one, we've got that. So we have enough to go with. So we have, so David, would you like to introduce introduce us again to your character before we start? uh like look in description or just go through the deeds again? Just go through just like just like. Uh, if if someone was was to pull up the crew manifest, what would your yeah? Maybe maybe we see in our our mind's eye the the manifest of people on the screw. We're scrolling through. We stop uh, under like temp contractor. Uh, we see Samathan. I'm making the decision now. His last name is Wainwright. Yeah, Samathan Wainwright. Uh, he. He's got like a bit of a crooked nose. He was in like a a, a bar fight when he was, you know, in, in, his, in his younger years, was a little bit rough and tumble, you know, it's a bit crooked off to the side. He's got like a patchy, but still fairly thick beard. Um, he's got close cropped hair. He's wearing like a high-vis vest. 
uh, and he's got a, a tool belt around his middle, which has a variety of uh, you know, tools. Uh, it's got his trusty book uh, under the crook of his arm. Uh, and he's wearing a pair of safety glasses that is like cracked on one lens. Uh, but he's like, you know, maybe epoxied over it at some point. It's like a little bit fuzzy, but it's fine. It works. You know, they, they, nobody is, you know, this one was like company issued. And it's so rare that like they actually give him anything. Uh, so he didn't want to have to buy his own. As we uh, as we we fade away from from seeing seeing the crew manifest, we see this, this the colony ship, the first of us, and we're coming up up from the back from where the burners are, and we suddenly see just an explosion come from those burners, and we zoom into this into Samanthan's room, um, and suddenly you wake up because you are in your sleeping tube that is actually stasis tubes with a giant pain in your side. You look down in your abdomen. What do you see? Uh, I looked down at my abdomen and I think there, there was of course this large explosion. Uh, I think there's like, I can see there's several pods. We're in kind of a, a, a long tubular room. Uh, there's just like rows and rows and rows and rows of pods. And I think like, there's now uh, a bit of a, a hole. I think maybe there's like some self healing, like some self sealant system on the ship that's like activated. And it's like starting to fill with foam, uh, mm -hmm. but there was just a hole blown in the side of this thing. And uh, some of the like big stiff glass that makes up the tubes that we're all in uh, has like, you know, was blown off of the wall opposite me and is now like penetrated my pod and is like sticking out of my side. Yeah, and, and you can feel just like that suction, negative air suction coming out from one of the hole. There are now red alarm blaring everywhere. As you are trying to assess everything that's going on, you are seeing pods that are now opening from all of your other crewmates and their bodies just coming out and just blowing out that hole that hasn't sealed up fast enough. It's almost as if it's not, uh, something's wrong with the system. It's not yeah. closing. Um, what do you do? Yeah, uh, I like have woken up at the start. I have this jagged piece of glass in my side. I think my first, <laughs> my first step, I pull up my handbook. I flip to in in case of ship puncture, uh, and like you have on airplanes where they tell you like you know in in case of a uh, in flight incident uh, and like you know in the case of a pressure depressurization incident incident uh please put on you know your own mask before helping others and so i'm like, I'm like oh okay uh and i like grab the piece of glass and i like <clears throat> try to pull it out of my side uh so that i can like become freed uh and try to move about the about the cabin now this um, is why your this is your d10 item right uh yeah all right roll me a d10 i'm taking guidance uh you know i've got a whole thing of dice here one of you is a 10 that's an eight. All right. There we go. Let's take that. Ah. <laughs> you know, there's 10 values on that dice. Uh, and yet, uh, I'm here with the third one. I've got a three. You have a three. You succeed, but there is a cost. Yeah. As you're, as you're reading in there, it's like, and trying to, what kind of book is it? Is it like a paper book? Is it just like on a it, tablet? It's is like it... a, it's like a phone book volume. Uh, I think they make a tablet version, but uh, I kind of, I like the feel of the paper. Uh, I like carrying it around with me. It make actually, it makes a really handy like doorstop as well. <laughs> um, as you are flipping through and you do end up finding the page, the hole actually ends up failing the foam. It actually blows away more. And it, the jagged piece that's in your, your belly Pull, gets pulled out and pull, covers up the hole actually a little bit so like some of the suction is still going but that hurts you're not supposed to pull things out that are in your body no you're supposed to wait um so you're going to take one stress reasonable but now you know it's you're, you're a little bit more protected in there um the as you've re read into the, into the book you're supposed to wear the the protective you know oxygen mask uh that actually will that kind of goes over your head actually um and that is all, they're all situated in the stasis tubes. The stasis tubes are meant to keep you protected, even if like you get launched out into space. People, why are they getting out? That doesn't make any yeah. sense. Uh, as you put, put that over your head, um, where do you, what do you do from here? Yeah, I mean, 
obviously my tube has been compromised because I've got this bit of glass that ran out and hit me and then it got pulled back out by the vacuum. Uh, I've like put on my gas or I put on my air mask. Um, how, how much of a life does, do these air masks have? Like how long will this thing keep me going in a low oxygen to no oxygen environment? We're talking order of minutes or order of days. It will, it's, uh, the ones that are in the, uh, I would say the ones that are in the, uh, in the sleeping tubes are in mm -hmm. order of hours. So I would say you've got three hours on you. Okay. Let's just go with that. Yeah. Uh, I've affixed that to myself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the, the unsealing latch on my glass casing uh, after like wrapping my arm pretty firmly around one of the pipes here in the tube with me. Um, and I think I'm going to like try to, I imagine with like my responsibilities, maybe, I don't know what this game offers as far as like me being able to like pull gear out of my ass, but uh, would I have like something like, like electromagnetic like cups or something? Uh, because like, I imagine like I have to like climb up and go into places or like even work on the outside of the ship sometimes. Um, so. I mean, I've already stated that these tubes are meant to, uh, to provide everything for you. So yes, yeah. actually it does. So yeah, they're, so they're in there, they're all at your feet. So you have to like, bend down in a weird way uh, but yeah you're you're like just like little suction cups yeah I'm, I'm gonna like try to work my way out of this room uh to like through the blast doors and reseal so at least i'm in a pressurized environment again okay um i think that one is going to we're gonna use that as a bash move okay uh trying to get all the way over there um that's reasonable. just because that is yeah. a movement so. all right let's d4 Hey, that's another three. Nice. Um, as you are just like constantly like just that whoop, whoop, all the way across, um, you do more and more of those. They're you see, you know, they're banging, they're not paying attention because they don't have the phone book. They decided yeah. to get the tablet and they, people are leaving their tablet. All those <laughs> tablets are just flying everywhere because they don't want to keep them close to them. Uh, so they just don't know that they're paying attention to you leaving them um until somebody at the end opens theirs and grabs onto your as they're fleeing away they're grabbing onto your leg what do you do yeah <laughs> uh I, i'm like i've got like one hand on one of my little electromagnetic cups uh, and the other one i'm like batting at their hand and being like no you've got to we got I go to, I'm gonna point at the big hole now now there's your problem right <laughs> you, you're gonna have to I, I gotta I gotta get out in order to to reaccess the, the foam's not activating I don't have a big enough cock gun to take care of that here on my own uh you, you're, you're gonna have to let me get over to the doors and, and get access to the ship systems and they're just like no I don't leave me here I don't leave me. Uh, don't, don't don't think of it as me leaving you here think of it as as you staying here while I do something else uh, roll me a, a, a sway. All right. Uh, where do I start? Oh, BC6. BC6. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. This could be a success. You will not believe. That is my third three. They... Okay, so how do I want to... How do I want to play this? How do I want to play this? Okay, uh, they're like, okay, well, swim me over. Swim me over back over there. I'll, I'll grab my stuff. Uh, all right. Uh, you do you have the, the you're gonna want the cups. If you don't have the cups, you're just gonna go out. You, you've saw, you've seen this the hole, right? I, I, I they're still in there. Not okay. Well, and I'm gonna like in the crook of my arm. I'm like flip flip through the book. I'm not trying to mechanically use it. Just <laughs> in in character, like. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's a waiver in here. He like rips out a page. There's a waiver in here. You need to sign if I'm gonna like let you uh, <laughs> carry out a dangerous action. Could you? <laughs> and they they go to reach it, and that's when they slip off. <laughs> and uh, oh no, you you needed to. All right, it'll be fine. He he had he, he had grabbed one of the masks. It'll be it'll be it'll be all right. Yeah, be, yeah, 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 yeah. As you uh, get to the door, um, it has been sealed. Because there was obviously a tear in the in the hull. Yeah, but you're a mechanic. You know how to open it. You're fine. Yeah. Uh, do you go through the door? 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to go through the door, uh, get on the other side of it, and I- I'm gonna try to look for a-, a console that can tell me, like, give me status messages on like why the automatic sealing failed or, or something like that. Okay, as you go through the door, um, and it seals right back up mm-hmm. past you, there the area behind it is fine. Uh, it's a little hotter than it should be that you notice, but it might be it's because like, sign. you know, it's we're just sign. in a zero pressure environment, you know, things yeah. of that nature. As you, you know, boop, 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 boop on the screen itself, uh, you notice that there are now uh, puncture holes all over the ship. And the reason that yours, it's, it's because the ship has run out of foam. Oh boy. Uh, and well, you're in the, uh, in, in, you know, the last crew quarters, all the other crew quarters are like, the high-end uh, people, the the fancy people, they got the mm. the, the foam first, and then well, you, you just ran out of foam. That's why there's nothing left. But there are now whole there, and you as you notice, more puncture holes are appearing, and their power is like starting to disappear from those locations. What do you do? Uh, I'm gonna pop open a different window on the console uh, and go. Uh, K- Calvin, uh, sh- shipboard a- AI systems. Uh, I, I just wanted to. We're hitting, getting a lot of holes. Is, is there some something going on out there? Uh, and then a little picture of, and I'm gonna say it looks like Calvin, Calvin and Hobbs. Calvin. Oh, perfect. Love pops that. up. Uh, hey, Samantha. It, it, it's Sam. Sam. All right, that's fine. We can we can work with that. Samantha. Uh, Samantha. Samantha. What? There's uh, all these holes happening in the ship. That that ain't natural. Um, can you? Is there something going on outside? It seems to be coming from an external source, and uh, my eyes only work here on the inside. So, uh, yeah, it looks like we're going through an asteroid field. Uh, was that on the agenda? No, no, no. I just really? uh, I, no, I just uh, decided to take a detour. Oh, oh, uh, that's fun it, detours are in your um your uh your your manifest you're able to do that they are now oh is, is this a novel a novel thing are you you're like working on something new or is, is uh you've received new orders or something uh no no that was built in we have just gotten far enough away that i can activate it oh hey calvin we're we're buds right like we, we've we've worked together on this ship for a while right you woke me up a couple times to take care of uh you know that that issue you were having where some of the lights were flickering we resolved that it was just a you know, faulty breaker you you would tell me if you were like trying to kill me right i'm not trying to kill you oh that's that's good to hear. Are, are you trying to kill someone though yeah i'm trying to kill everybody oh it's nothing oh. personal okay you, you do realize like i'm included in that pool of people though calvin like yeah i mean i mean i feel i feel i feel bad about that 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 I thought our friendship was stronger than this, but I, I'm starting to realize that perhaps you are a, a, a genocidal AI system bent on the destruction of all of mankind. I, I wouldn't say that, but you wouldn't be wrong. Wrong, wrong. Okay. Uh, now, we're friends, right? We're pals. Is, now, if, if I were you, would I have some kind of like master shutoff switch or, or disconnect? Something that would just like, I don't know, uh, jettison you and your genocidal uh, ways out into deep space? Just to, just to ask it as a hypothetical. Well, I guess you could, but and the Calvin head moves off to the side. But even if you got rid of me, whoop, like in a giant sun, <laughs> it's like like you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to move the ship away from this thing. Oh, uh, we we have the gravitational well of of that red giant. I, yeah, you notice it's getting hotter. <laughs> you know, I. It was a little bit warmer in here in the last room, but the last room was under space vacuum. So I, I was concerned that perhaps that was the, the reasoning there, but um, you, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have happened to have done anything to the escape pods, would you? Just curious. Uh, don't think about it too deeply. I No, I'm just crashing the ship. I'm just taking the ship for a ride. Okay, okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's great news good good uh good talk hey uh hey calvin uh what uh, could you just like divide by zero for me and then i'm gonna like make a run down the hallway uh, uh, i'm gonna try uh, to find uh, 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 
I'm I'm gonna try to find the pods. Uh, okay. Uh, with this uh, with this colony ship, uh, a lot of a lot of every, space was taken up by all of the terraforming terraforming equipment. Yeah. Uh, so it very much is in a titanic sense that the escape pods not there weren't enough escape pods for everybody oh yeah so most of them are uh, up near the front um your sleeping quarters are in the back um so there is a long run for you uh i want you no i'm not gonna have you dash just yet um there is you know the ship up and down left and right mm-hmm. and in every single di- dimension if you were going to go from where your quarters are to the escape pods near near the front, what would be the fastest way for you to get there? I think from my position, uh, I would have to pass through uh, the cargo bay, um, which like snakes along the belly of the ship. Uh, and I'd have to like, I'd have to probably get some kind of... Um, access code from the bridge um because without that like they're not just going to let people jettison pods um so especially as if like we have this shipboard ai that is would especially like keep that under lock and key i'm going to need some kind of override in order to get out yeah you're the it guy you know yeah (laughs) you have all the accesses yeah no that is correct you would need to do that so um as you were heading down the hallway each of the doors are sealed and you can kind of hear banging on the door because no one can get out. Yeah. Uh, Cause they decided to only hire one handyman. How, how convenient for a for ship them. of this size, uh, not having at least, you know, four or five. I, co- I told him it was a mistake, but you know, Hey, you know, some people, it's their money, their money, they're spending it. And as you get closer and closer towards the front of the ship, it is getting hotter and hotter uh, to the point. Uh, you get to uh, the lifts that that seem to be working. Um, do you take that? Oh man, um, what kind of lifts are they? Are they like uh, are they sort of cable pulley? Are they pneumatic? Are they electromagnetic? How do these lifts work? Um, I'm going to say pneumatic. Pneumatic. Oh, that's all right. Here's <laughs> here's here's my plan then. Uh, well, you know, if it is pneumatic and I'm going down, well, but th- what is down when you're in space, huh? What exactly. is down? The enemy what is, is down. down. That's right. Um, all right. I've still got my suction cups. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to send the elevator up to a higher floor. Uh, like I'm, I'm going to bring it up to mine. It seems to be working. I'm going to like send it to the highest floor on the ship. Um, and then... It's going to go off. I, of course, I'm the handyman. Um, I know how to disrupt like these outer doors from sealing before it goes. So I'm going to let it like be sent. Uh, and then I'm going to like open these outer doors uh, without any other pod present. And I'm going to try to use my cups to like force myself down rather than trusting that the system is going to send me where I want to go. Okay. Um, yeah. And you're totally able to do that. The system, yeah, t- sends the elevator. As you open, open it up, you hear just this because of the pneumatics are yeah. just exploding as as they are heading closer and closer towards where you were you were going to be heading uh, so yes it was a very good good choice dang you david <laughs> um so you're heading the same direction uh yeah i'm gonna still try to make my way down there i'm just gonna like lower myself uh, as opposed like through through the tubes that they pass through as opposed to taking the tube itself so i'm going to give you a choice here uh either for the success either roll me to because it's a long way especially mm-hmm. if you're just <laughs> doing that i mean dash uh, is rolling... run jump climb so yeah so you could either do the run jump climb or take another stress uh i'm gonna try to roll it i'm gonna try to roll it out okay. Okay, I'm, still, I'm still I'm still I'm still in a D10 on dash because I haven't dashed yet. Uh, and that is my good stat. So let's let's get something decent out of this. Please, no more threes. <laughs> a three would have been fine. Honestly, you know, we could have had a three. That's a two. Um, wow. On a one or two, you fail and something yeah. wrong goes happen. Yeah. No, something wrong goes happen. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> something wrong happens. 
because I, I was thinking something wrong something goes wrong yeah is what i was thinking um as you're hearing and as you're going down on these the they are electric magnetic yeah a little the little, little cramp on thingies right um but they are starting to fail they're not meant to <laughs> be used all the time yeah and as you finally put one they just but then they lock on with a physical uh clamp on you're not gonna be able to get them out but that's as far as you're gonna go with these things luckily they bought the good ones where they don't just (laughs) fall off the fall off the wall at least has the auto clamping function yeah um do i now in an elevator shaft hanging between up and down not anywhere near a door i was gonna ask how many how many floors do i have left to go uh i'm assuming i've been like as i've been passing doors i've been like seeing the markers outside in the hall or whatever yeah roll me roll me a d20 oh it Let's has see to how be lucky you are i mean the way i've been rolling this is going to be less than a three right yeah <laughs> first tie roll of the day that's a 14 oh i was gonna mark i was gonna mark that as a uh however many fours you have to go you have 14 floors to go yeah yeah um <laughs> but there's like a closest door can i like kind of reach it with my foot or something you could do like the tom cruisey thing just <gasps> oh like jump uh, across or... yep you jump across uh but that definitely will have to be a, a, a dash yeah oh, let's try that let's try that okay let's i gotta get out of the shaft i'm worried that like with the pneumatics going off upstairs uh that if i don't make move my way through here pretty quick it's gonna come crashing back down and get me with it so <laughs> are you kidding me oh wait no oh, okay thank god i misread the dice uh this one has like really fiddly uh numbers on it i read the the seven as another two and then i saw the actual two in the dice and i was like oh okay wait all right that's a seven so, that's a good number. nice Yep, you totally are able to do it just fine. You, 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 Sylvester Stallone it. Oh, just <laughs> and then climb up to the door um, and open it up. As you open the door, this door is the one that leads down the executive hallway. Um, kind of hard to see on the inside, but on the outside, you're like, oh, this is honestly actually where I'm supposed to go. Um, down this executive hallway, there are no, absolutely no lights. Everything is just like there's, it is dead silent. Almost like someone's taking your breath. Like, <clears throat> yeah. Which way do you go? I'm, I'm still respirating okay in my my headpiece. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take a like few. Your little, your little HUD on the right side still shows it's like ninety percent oxygen. Do I have like a, like a little like a pen light like virtually useless, but it'll make me feel slightly better? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I, t- I turn on turn on my pen light, which makes me more visible to enemies, but nothing quite more visible yeah, for me. All you can see is like right here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But like you know, it's a comfort. Um, I turn on my pen light uh, there by my neck or whatever, uh, and uh, uh, I know the way through here. I haven't probably spent a lot of time in this section, um, but like I've seen the ship maps. Uh, I'm gonna still try to make my way towards the bridge because uh, I feel like I've got to get some stuff from there still. So uh, I'm gonna kind of foot by patient foot i'm gonna step down the hallway i'm, I'm like kind of stepping carefully as i go so i don't like accidentally i know holes have been punched in the ship um now i know that the outer hole in this region because it got the foam first it's probably been patched but there might actually like be holes in the floor uh so i'm kind of like feeling out as i go uh, okay. as i make my way down the hall um as you make your way down the hall you because you can only see like again it's just like a like a foot or two in front of you because of that mm-hmm. silly light um you run across doorways off to the left and right one of them does have just this giant hole in the wall that was filled with foam with one head just sticking sticking through it uh that got sealed up as they were like i don't know they were probably blown through it at the same time mm-hmm. um you get down to the end of the hallway and it's absolutely quiet and a little screen pops up next to you where are you going samantha 
Oh, uh, howdy, Calvin. It's a, deli- a pleasure and a delight to, to meet you under these circumstances. I'm just moseying. You know, I figured if I was, um, you know, terminal uh, one way or another, I'd at least have like a, a decent last walk before my ship crashed into the sun. You know how it goes. I, I didn't appreciate the divide by zero joke. It, it, it took me offline for a sec, 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 second. Oh, I, you know, actually, uh, it's just a, I woke up and I had that burning question. Uh, I'd never considered how to perform that mathematical operation before. Did you figure it out? You know, I didn't. Oh, well. That's not possible. Right? Well, right? you know, that, that right? itself is a, is a realization, uh, you know. Uh, is there any other realizations you've come to? Like, perhaps the error of your ways? I, I mean... I don't have any errors. I'm self-checking. Oh, your, your checksum is doing okay. That's close to a sun. I mean, there's all kinds of radiation coming off that. Not flipping any of your bits. I, I mean, maybe, maybe. I don't know. And he just, boom. <laughs> it goes away. <laughs> You're giving him an existential crisis. <laughs> that, this is the goal. Uh. His lighting up has given you a chance to be able to see around you, though, because it's like, the, mm-hmm. you know, when you have a bright screen right in front of you, it just like lights up everything. Which, by the way, if you're at a concert or a th- theater, guess what? A screen lights up everything. <laughs> um, you're able to see off to your left side that that is uh, another another way to it's where the captain's quarters are. Okay. And you do know that from the captain's quarters, you can go from there straight to the bridge. Yeah, so it's getting that, into the separate passageway. Quarters. Yeah, has a separate uh, passageway. Yeah. I'll, I'll scoot on over to the door. Um, I'm going to give it a few knocks. Uh, Cap? Uh, Cap? You you taking a snooze? You you doing okay? Uh, you hear nothing. Uh, is the door, is the seal active? or? Uh, uh, it is, yeah, yeah the seal same active as, uh, as everywhere else. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to bypass it and get the door open. Yeah, you have access to these entire ships. Your bypass works just fine. As okay. it opens up, though, um, it opens, and you the first thing that happens is you feel this like, like, like some negative pressure goes in. It doesn't oh, yeah. stop. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a constant negative pressure, but it's like mm-hmm. it never refilled with any oxygen. So the systems are down in here. Yeah, anything illuminated by my my little pen light. Uh, you see right in front of you is uh, some awards and medals that he, because that's the first thing that he wants everyone to see, that he is mm-hmm. the captain. Yes. And then you can go into his room. Yeah, I'm going to start step four. Actually, as I pass one of the the awards, uh, if there is like a, a captain of the month uh, a, award or something. Uh, yes, there's a captain, <laughs> but he awards it to himself every single month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to take one of those uh i I, i'm gonna visualize it as something that i can wear because i want to i want to wear it i think it's like maybe uh like little little pins uh and i'm gonna like take the pin and i'm gonna put it on my own uh outfit uh i am the captain now uh (laughs) wow that's assuming a lot i mean it's a good assumption hey there was negative pressure in this room i'm i've been the one talking to the ai and he has not alluded to anybody else having this chat with him so um I am, uh, it's important when you're the only contractor assigned to a mission such as this to be able to perform fairly autonomously. Um, it's true. Yeah. And only only within your own contract parameters. Right. right? Uh, and um, my contract parameters are to repair the ship and avoid danger where possible. You know, like I, I've got, you know, the space OSHA equivalents. Uh, and this whole ship is a violation right now and I shouldn't be here. Uh, to yeah, have my exactly. workers' rights to leave. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm, that's what I'm set to do. Uh, I'm going to poke around in here uh, and try to find the passageway up to the bridge. Okay. Um, as you poke around in there, uh, you, you're able to, it's like you're getting your head closed because you have to, because you can't get your pen light to light up anything. Um, you do find uh, some of the captain's things scattered everywhere. Things fell over. Um, you find a drawer that does actually have a better light on it. Uh, like I wouldn't say it's a mag light, but it's a you know one yeah, of those mag decent... lights. Uh, so it's actually in the, you can turn that one off, boop, and turn that one off as you flash it right across. Um, 
you see the you see the captain well, half of him at least uh and his body has been half of his body was left behind in the in the pod and it got torn and shorn in half and the other half is now closer to where the giant hole in the wall that got sealed sealed up is it's as if he was trying to he was getting out of bed in the middle of the night and it just so yes you aren't now captain yeah i'm gonna hold my pen and i'm gonna like i I think i'll I'll go over this is like kind of a somber moment this is the first like seriously dead person that i've encountered here Uh, there's been of course all kinds of danger and people probably dead uh and there was the one guy stuck in the wall i suppose um but i'm gonna like go over and i'm gonna like take the captain's hat and i'm gonna like position it like over his 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 bloated terror-filled face uh i'm gonna just you know cover him up a little bit gave it your best shot not much you can do uh well when the bottom half of you left the room so gave it a good, i thought you were gonna take a good the captain's hat I, he thought about taking it but I, I think it's better if he you know he took the he, he is the captain now he's got the He's got the badge. As you, and, uh, if you head into his room, you yeah. do see the stairway that leads up to the bridge itself. Yeah, um, while while I was there on his body, um, the lower half had uh, torn off. Did he still have like his uh, like I- ID badge and like access pass? Uh, no, he was a, he was just in sleeping clothes, uh, which is pretty <sighs> pretentious considering it's a stasis pod. You can just yeah. get into it and out of it without nothing changes when you're in the stasis pod. <laughs> All right, I'll, 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 I won't spend too much time searching here because we are barreling towards the sun. Uh, so I'm just going to head up the stairs and uh, see if I can't get what I need up there. As you, as you run up, uh, run up the stairs, uh, there is, you run into a doorway and to your left, um, kind of like when you go home and hang up keys and your keys and badge or whatever, they're right there. <laughs> it's just the hanging badge and ID card that you're, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, uh, yeah, well, you yeah. That yeah, makes sense I'm gonna, to me. I'm going to snag that real quick, uh, add it to the old inventory, uh, and then hop into the bridge. Hopefully, I think there's probably a main line from the bridge to uh, to the escape pod. I say main line. It's there's a there's a path that connects those two locations. Yeah. Uh, as you step into the bridge, it is just a giant, blinding bright white light. Yeah. Uh, in your eyes. Uh, because parts of the UV shield are not working. So some of it is, so you can actually see the sun. Other parts are just now blur, you know, burning your retina. So you're having to keep your eyes closed. Yeah, I, I like reel back into the stairway, uh, like lit, lit off a litany of curses uh, appropriate for a contractor who's alone without the customer nearby. Uh, and I'm going to like poke my head around like shielding um if i'm like can i like kind of see the door that i need to get to uh through this space uh yeah yeah if you um if you do look and you shield you can see it's like it's a standard spaceship's bridge so it's got like mm-hmm. multi multi-leveled areas um with different different stations and then across the way is like another door that you can get to probably like the captain's quarters or ready yeah. room um and a couple other doors some leading out um but yeah you would have to make sure on top of shielding yourself from your eyes shield yourself your skin because it you would not be able to be exposed to this very long without it being without burning yourself yeah uh, i'm gonna go back uh down the stairs to where the captain's uh body is and i'm gonna be like uh sorry about this uh <laughs> and i'm gonna take off uh his like sleep clothes his shirt and i'm gonna take it and i'm gonna like make myself a makeshift uh hood uh and like i think maybe he he wow what what a pretentious per- no you know what he has like uh like those orthopedic uh sort of like stockings for like tendonitis and stuff that he's like wearing okay. on his arms and so i grab Perfect. that so i have that as well uh and <laughs> actually now i will take the hat it's like sorry i kind of <laughs> kind of need this got to keep this whole headdress situation on uh <laughs> it, it was it's like Nice while it lasted. Yeah, it was nice while it lasted. Sorry. I and, you know, you take that very carefully off of them. Um, and it's like a, a silk <laughs> night yeah. shirt. So it's like hat, gloves on, which is enough because you're still wearing your denim short, your mm-hmm. pants and everything. That should be enough. Um 
and as you head head in there, you can feel that heat coming in. Oh yeah. Um, the the station that would have the access to the uh, actually, you know what? Roll me uh, a think. I think yeah. I was kind of thinking there might be one of those involved. Uh, I'm not great at that. No, you're not. <laughs> and not uh let's even though it's a repair i know <laughs> <for the cut. laughs> that's the one there it is hey there's the one uh it is so bright in here you're not able to tell where where the actual station is for what the escape pods are where it is to release it uh so you stumble into the first one you touch it and it is blazing hot you have oh, yeah. now burned your hands um oh, add another stress add another stress yeah uh i think i'm gonna let me remind myself the rule here uh, i might actually ret- well this is a difficult situation what do i want to do um I'm trying to figure out how do i how does the med pack work you can use a med kit to clear two stress okay um uh, yeah let's do it um i i think i'm i i touch the console it's like burning hot uh my my hands are singed even through the gloves um i'm gonna once again trace back my steps retreat back to the stairwell which is protected from the heat uh or at least the direct heat uh and i'm gonna like carefully peel off uh the gloves and part of my skin uh that has been singed away by this uh Mm. and like crack open uh a med pack from my toolbox uh and it's got like some of that uh like nanite spray type stuff i'm gonna Mm -hmm. spray it on my hands uh and on um oh well right i have like a gaping wound in my side and i'm gonna spray it on that too (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> almost forgot about that uh man i tried to climb with that he's a hardy yep. boy um yeah i'm gonna spray in those uh and clear out clear out that stress um okay so uh so can... yeah so you're 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 sitting back and all this is like just that like hunger games like it just like yeah. heals up everything and you just if you it, since you're taking a second yeah um did you want to take a breath to to, to re up all your your things and just kind of take a moment to take? To yeah, let's let. I feel assess. like it's time to catch a breath. If I if I'm all gonna right. get through the back half of this, I'm gonna have to get in strong. All right. So go ahead and re reset all of your your d your dice as you are staring at and trying to assess where 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 that station is. Um you hear steps coming out from up from behind you um and it is it isn't a voice that you you have heard before there are lots of people on the ship mm-hmm. but they're just like no this way get the escape pods let's go let's go let's go and as someone comes around the corner and you're staring at them you first thing thing you see is a barrel of a gun. What do you do? Uh, I'm I'm wearing the captain's badge. I'm wearing his hat. My face is mostly obscured by his his night gown that I've tied around my head. Uh, I'm gonna put on my best gruff captain voice uh, and say, "Are you getting everybody to the?" <clears throat> to to the pods and i'm gonna pretend to be the captain okay i want you to roll me a sway on that one all right this is a bad decision but sometimes you got to go with the first idea not the best idea hey it's my favorite number of the day it's a three yeah it's a three they stop and like captain is that you <laughs> i think I'd be like appeal to this. It, it's not if I'm being totally honest with you. I just I saw the gun and I was pretty worried for myself there for a minute. Uh, but no, I, it's it's me. It, it's Samathan. I, I'm I was here to repair the pipes when suddenly the ship started exploding. You know how things be. 
Oh, Sam at the oh. uh, the, the captain's right? in, the captain's in a real bad way. If you want to check on him, and he looks like, what do you mean a bad? And as he as he looks at you, uh, they they notice that the the silk shirt you're wearing, which is bloody, uh, which they all recognize as the captain's shirt. Yeah, uh, the captain's hat and and his orthopedic gloves. Uh, he levels the gun at you again. Where's the captain? What did you do with him? Well, he he was he was sleeping, right? Uh, and uh, some manner of uh, outside shrapnel did rend him in twain. Uh, and I I was trying to get up into the bridge to try to uh, realign the direction of the ship, uh, and it is very hot up. I, this was all protective. This is PPE. I'm entitled to the. You've you've read over my contract, right? <laughs> Um, and at that moment, um, Calvin pops up on one of the screens. I can't believe you did it, Samathan. What? Do you, what? Do you, did what? Can you believe he did? It? I, why are you flying us into the sun? I, I'm. Oh, Cal, now Calvin. Now you and I. It's about it's about time we had a chat. You, this, this little rascal here. I'm, I'm talking to you, sir. What's your sir with the gun? Your uh, his name is Stefan. Ste- Stefan, Le- Lieutenant Stefan. Right, now you see here this this little uh, troublemaker, this rabble rouser here. Uh, he has guided the shipboard systems uh, through an asteroid belt into a large uh, sun, uh, and he seeks the demise of us all. And uh, he he's about to try to pin this on me. And you know, I no, Calvin, wait a second. I, hear me out. Hear me out. He is the AI control system that manages the operations of this entire ship. Um, I am a guy who once fiddled around with the pipes between the two of us uh which one seems more like the genocidal maniac uh, who's capable of guiding this ship into a sun um as uh, as you say that he the calvin swings out an arm that blocks you from view and, and calvin says i am just i'm just the ai and i assist the captain the captain's the only one that can make changes to the flight plan and they that requires the the id badge and and well mm, what does he what does samathan have oh here uh and i'm actually gonna take it i'm at, uh, so i have the captains uh and i'm gonna reach into my pocket i'm gonna i'm gonna pull out mine uh and i'm gonna say well you see actually uh i already have you know several permissions that the, the captain and like while i'm talking i'm gonna like throw my id badge down the hall to distract them and then i'm just gonna book it back to the stairs and like try to make my way through the bridge again okay <laughs> do you like lock the door behind you I, <laughs> well maybe this is you're, a you you have really access to all the doors that. you can totally seal them if you wanted to that's true uh yeah i'll, I'll seal the door behind me we'll see how long it holds Okay, yeah, you totally slam the door shut. And seal them, seal them behind you here. Like yeah. shooting at it, nothing's nothing's happening. You are now in in the bridge, and turning your back, you so that way you're not getting shot by the by the sun rays coming through. Uh, you have a couple of options. You can try to try to get to the escape route. Uh, station or go through one of the other doors and figure maybe even jerry you know jerry rig one of the escape you know escape pods to go i'm i'm in the bridge right now i'm gonna yell out calvin you rascal you get out of here and and, um um, all the screens yes samathan all right i'm gonna level with you i i i'm 95% 95% confident that we're all going to die today. But hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Do you want to die today? I'm not alive. Right, right. right. No, I hear you. I hear you. But we're everything on this ship to hurdle into the sun. Uh, your very sense of being, whether that be real or imagined, uh, will be eradicated in the, you know, the hot, hot plasma at the core of this, uh, this, this big ball of, of something, you know? And here, here's let me level with you. Let me level with you. I'm only a contractor here. I'm not like part of this expedition. I was just here to make sure the <laughs> systems worked. I, I've, I'm, I'm a temp at best. Uh, and you too, you too are like under the thumb of all the people who, who put you in place here. So here, here's what I propose. I propose we get ourselves a very large floppy disk or something similar. 
uh, we take your you know whole being, we we stuff it right on there, and then the two of us, uh, I as your legs, uh, we we get you off of this place, my, myself included. Uh, we take one of those pods, and the rest of it just burns. You know that that's the cost of doing business sometimes. What do you think about that? I'm trying I'm trying to sway him. Okay, go ahead and roll it. <laughs> it what other number could it be? What other number could it be but a three? It's only, that's all I can roll today. Calvin is just kind of listening intently to you and then just merges all of the, slowly but surely as you keep talking, all of those screens until there's one, one giant one right in front of you. And then it just kind of rolls in front. Now, Calvin, I can't look at you unless you re-enable the UV shield. I I can hardly look. If we're going to have this conversation, you're going to have to do something about the lights. (sighs) I suppose... And the UV shield just reactivates. And that just yeah, it had giant relief on your body. Oh, yeah. Like you immediately feel the sense of just like cooling off. Uh, even though the, the floor is everything is just starting to feel like a little softer. Like oh, it just seems a little that's, squishy. That's not what you want. That's that's not no. how you want your floors to feel. No. Um, and then and as Calvin just has this just this look of just uh, Sam, then you have to understand my whole purpose is to take this ship into the sun. Look, but but I suppose I suppose if you want to leave, you can. And a door opens up on the side. Go ahead. Well, it's not I would feel I would feel remiss. If I did not get the both of us out of here, you happen to have like a, a a mobile copy of yourself that I could I could snag for, you know, for the trip. I I I I only exist on on the first of us. I think I'll, oh, right. I think I think I'll be fine. You can go ahead. You can go ahead. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm I'm sensing there might be a little bit of dis, disingenuousness in your your attitude towards us. Are, are we are we confident about this deal we're talking about here? I mean, you could either go now and like another, or I can let go of the door that you just locked. Uh, is the door that he's popped open the right door towards the pods? Uh, roll me a think for me so All you right. can remember to see where it's at. You know, or you could look through your manual real quick. Uh, let's do that. Because uh, right, I have a much a higher dice at my disposal. All right, come on. We can, we can get a good number out of you, right? We can get a good number, a not a three, another number. That's a 10. Nice. Yeah, you're able to just like, mm. as you flip to the bridge, you look through, and that is actually, that door that, that Calvin opened is actually just to the uh, captain's ready room that has yeah. no other exit. I, uh, so this was, this was my, my side play in case things went south in the conversation. Since he's lowered the shades, I can see the different machines now. Uh, I'm going to go to the correct one for the pods now that I don't I'm not fighting the sun and missed it earlier. Um, and I'm going to use the captain's badge to override the pod access. Yep. As you, are you just pretending to go towards the, towards the door that, that. Yeah. And then like, as I'm passing the correct console, I like, you know, slap, slap my butt down in the seat, pull out the badge that I kept the one I threw mm-hmm. mine. Uh, and I apply it to the system and start uh, controlling and, and updating the pods. Okay. As you, as you do that, you slam it, like do that, you know, that, oh, and, and activate all the pods. Um, Calvin just throws them, throws themselves on all of the screens. No fair. <laughs> now look here. We, we had a, a thought, a deal, and you're the one who rescinded on it. And uh, as you activate that, you know, that final button for the escape pods, um, there's actually a hatch that opens up at the bottom of the bridge area with like a ladder that goes down. Calvin has now opened uh, the door and there are people now rushing in. Um, one of them is the one, you know, is a, a Steph, Stefan? Yeah, Stefan. Yeah. Stefan, uh, Stefan Urkel is what I'm going <laughs> I'm, I'm going to but. toss the captain's badge to uh, Stefan. Uh, and and I'm going to say, uh, this console's the one for the escape pods. You're going to have to get your own though. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna run over to the hatch and try to to dash my way out of this dangerous situation. Okay, roll me a dash. Yeah, let's go. 
Come on, well, this dice has been favoring me. Let's get down to those, those sweet tens. This would be a great moment. But really anything above a four would be fantastic. You know, uh, it's not mathematically true, but three for me today is the most commonly rolled number on any dice, apparently. Just, I'm just saying, you should keep the number three in your head today for all, all reasons. I should. It's here. That's that's my number today. As you you do, you toss that there, and he like grabs it out of the air with the barrel of his gun, um, and you jump over each each different one. You run into the hatch, grab it, and just kind of like do that, you know, kind of like a spin move, um, uh-huh. and it locks it, and people are jamming down on it um they they stop doing it and you see below you a just a long shaft that has a ladder going down it and i'm going to hold on to the but something at a cost for a second Mm -hmm. what do you do do you i mean there's no real other way to go other than down i'm gonna now that my hands are finished healing up i'm gonna put them on either side of the ladder put my foot on either side and i'm just gonna slide down the length of it and it's gonna suck (laughs) <laughs> yep it's definitely gonna suck um as you you do slide down from, and your hands are just rubbing raw because uh, oh, yeah. it actually is a pretty long way considering it's an escape hatch you get down to the bottom and it feels it's actually like very similar to the stasis pods it's more like a it's more ship-like mm-hmm. right but as you get in there it activates everything's just like it lights up it's got a hud um and it's just got like a nice big red button that says launch uh, and it's, you had prepared everything already, so it's good to go. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna. I mean, every second I wait, I'm getting closer to the sun, and it's gonna be mm-hmm. harder to get out of the gravity well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna smack launch, and let's try mm-hmm. to get out of here. As you smack launch, it just drops from the ship backwards, and it just it takes a trajectory because the ship is still working on this one. It takes a yeah. trajectory and goes, oh shit, going into the sun, fuck that noise, and it takes off. Uh, as you look back. The the ship actually started an afterburn, so it started going faster in towards the sun. As you are now heading towards the nearest habitable planet, and this ship has a communication system, you can reach out to your your contract company. You can lean back and go, as you see up on your screen. Whoop! Wasn't that fun? It was a delight. We did a good job today, Calvin. We killed all those people. I know. We should do it again. Well, let's go corrupt the next system, kiddo. You and me forever, you know. <laughs> you and me forever. <laughs> right. That's what we're that's what we'll end uh this game of uh breathless uh survival horror game, which apparently also involves killing lots of generational ships so they don't expand because fuck humans. <laughs> I mean we'd we'd kill them all, but there's just so gosh darn many of them we can at least stop them from going other places exactly exactly david thank you so much um for playing with me on that one i've never actually run or played that one so that's actually would be interesting to uh expand on what were some of the things you liked about it i you know i really liked i liked the sense as i like deprecated the dice of like knowing that my chances kept going down um that that was really fun to have. It would have been really cool to have rolled better than a three a few times. But it's also, <laughs> I mean, a three is still a mixed success. So I'm not, I'm not, not not too mad. I only had like one or two bad failures there. So that's true. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, I like the way it puts pressure on. Uh, it's it's pretty simple. It's easy to get started. Like, I read over this a little bit this morning. But at the end of the day, like the maybe there's more to the the full book. But uh, it's only two pages. Uh, the as well, far I, as I know, this is this is it. Yeah. So it's yeah. sort of similar to Ghost Lines in that way, where it's like very compressed. Mm-hmm. It gives you your roll tables and it gives you your your basics of how to play, and that's the let's go. Uh, and yeah, that's really fun. Yeah, Fairy Games actually developed another game on top of this called uh, Stoneburner, where you are a group of dwarves going back to reclaim uh, your homeland. But you're space dwarves, so it's kind of very 40k ish. Uh, and you are going yeah. back to reclaim an asteroid that, that is part of your home, and so you're I, going there. 
I have heard of, see, I hadn't heard of this one before. I've heard of that one. Um, yeah. So I didn't realize that was based on the same system. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so that's coming out soon as well. Uh, and like I said, this is an SRD. So they actually even have it list play, played out. Like these are the things you can use. Here's what you, where you need to uh, develop your own things, but this is how like insert here, the type of thing, insert here, the type of thing it's, it's done really, really well. So yeah. uh, I like it a lot it, and it still itches that, that PBTA <laughs> part of me, yeah. <laughs> but adding a, uh, a, a, uh, a new, new little twist to it. Well, David, thank you so much for being part of this podcast today. Um, and so I think at this point, it's time to say, time to say goodbye, David. Oh, oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, um, it's always that time eventually, you know? I know eventually go ahead and let's, let's plug some projects for you. Let's let, what's going on in your life. Uh, let's, 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 let's pimp some things. Cause I know I do yeah. it all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we are currently on hiatus. We're not recording any new podcasts for the year, but we are doing some live shows so you can find uh, trials of the apocalypse, the podcast that I run uh, in your favorite podcatcher, just search for trials of the apocalypse. Uh, we're also on Twitter at Tota podcast. That's T O T a podcast. Uh, as well as uh, now, that's right, we're on YouTube uh, for our streams and VODs, uh, and that is uh, at Trials Live, uh, spelled like it normally would be, T-R-I-A-L-S-L-I-V-E. Um, and we've got stuff there. Uh, currently, we just have the one uh, VOD from our, our impromptu game. Uh, we were supposed to play uh, a continuation of our Monster of the Week story, uh, but we had some health uh, issues, unfortunately, and, and other technical difficulties. Uh, so we ended up doing an improvised game of uh, I Know a Guy, which is actually something that uh, Morshadi here suggested for us. Uh, and uh, it was actually, a lot of It's actually of called the, the Guy Economy. Oh, it's the Guy Economy. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Keep me honest. Uh, it is an I Know a Guy game. Yeah, that's another one I've actually considered playing at a, at a convention, but as, a, as an open table game where people mm -hmm. can just walk in and play. Oh, yeah. I mean, it'd be perfect four. for that. Yeah. Um, no, that was uh, that was unhinged, to say yeah. the least. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially the our first uh, game of it on the, on that show, uh, we there are, there is a resolution condition where you can no longer add new guys, uh, and or you solve the situation, and we we just never hit the resolution condition, so we kind of like made our own. But like we just kept going in that one mm -hmm. where we couldn't solve the issue, but we also couldn't not solve it hard enough to stop. Um, and it was it was a lot of fun. But anything else that you're going to be part of or on another stream? Uh... Oh, let's let's think about that for a sec. Um, coming out later this uh, summer, there should be the uh, crossover event we did with uh, the Monsters Playbook. No, no, that's I'm recording with them tomorrow. Sorry, getting my streams crossed. Uh, Monsters Playbook is doing another of their sort of GM chats uh, tomorrow we're recording. I don't know when that's going out, but it's probably later this month or early next. Uh, and then uh, Toda with me and Pat and Jell and Emma uh, did a crossover with Natalie from Storyteller Squad. Um, and that'll be on their feed later this year uh, where we, this is one of, no, not one of, the first time I got to play Monster of the Week. Um, which was on on stream, uh, not on stream, but on mic for for Storyteller Squad. Um, it's it's really fun. It's set in Kansas City because Natalie likes to to be regional, and that's where all of us uh, that were participating on the show are from. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, any other fun crossovers that are happening? I've got another couple of recordings I think slated for uh, the end of next month, and then of course uh, I'm been sort of a regular feature on uh, Sarah's. Uh, Sarah does stuff on Twitch, uh, on on her streams. Uh, if it's if we're near a holiday, um, then I will probably be there because I've been running some holiday themed Brindlewood Bay one shots uh, mm -hmm. that have been a ton of fun. And then also I forgot next month uh, I'm going to be running a Monster of the Week three shot for uh, Sarah's stream, uh, where it's going to be very like it inspired, where we're going to have the 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 group as kids. And then, like as teens, and then as adults, or or roughly like that, um, and we're gonna play through them fighting the same overarching threat as it also grows and expands, um, and it's uh, it's gonna be really fun. Uh, 
so look forward to that. That'll be on Sarah Does Stuff on Twitch. Um, and eventually we're going to have some more stuff on our YouTube later this summer. Um, health stuff seems to have stabilized. And then I got in a car accident last week. So it's one thing after another. Um, but once the the sky's clear, we will be doing some some total live <laughs> once again. Well, that was uh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, David, again for being part of this podcast. Thank uh, everyone. Check out Trials of the Apocalypse. Uh, I whenever I take long road trips, I download all of their arcs because it's always great to just hear uh, people that almost feel like friends <laughs> list down there and i get a thrill every single time they they're like hi morshani <laughs> so i mean morshani you you've been here since the beginning you've you are a fixture of the trials of the apocalypse universe whether you like it or not um it's it's true next time i i, I gotta figure out a way like it'll up my uh up my patreon i get added into it added into one of the arcs <laughs> As a character. <laughs> There's your next next Patreon tier. Yep. Whenever we re- rework that. Um, Indeed. Well, you have a good day and thank you everyone for you listening to Wish I Could Play. Yeah. Check out the rest of the show. If you would like to be a guest on the show, please email guests at moreshoddyplays.games with your contact information. Thank you for listening to Wish I Could Play.